Hey, what's going on? <clears throat> First, before I say anything, I moved to Rumble, basically. So this should be on Rumble first. I guess people are still too afraid to sign up on Rumble. Rumble's starting to get live. Um, but I guess what I want to talk about <clears throat> is the NBA draft. And it's not about who got selected where, LeBron James' son, all that kind of stuff. It's not about that. It's about what they've been trying to do for the longest time. Which is to get us out of the game. Because we're the best. We didn't create the game. <clears throat> but we ended up taking over the game. We didn't create football. But we ended up taking over that. MLB, we ended up taking over that. Hockey, we created. <laughs> and uh, you see what happened with that. But when they wanted to become more popular, that's when they force feed black guys into the NHL. And that's why during the uh, NHL Stanley Cup Finals, that's why they had the black guy doing commentary. Now, out of all people who were in the NHL, they had him. And Mark Messier didn't even look like he liked the guy. So, uh, you know, I don't really watch hockey. I pay attention to who's winning and all that kind of stuff. I, you know, I watched the game seven because it was a game seven. But hockey is a frustrating sport to watch because they, the, the scoring is low. And like in that game seven, <clears throat> if a team is up by one goal and you got seven minutes left, it's hard for the other team to score, even one point. So I always said if they triple the size of the net, I watch hockey. MLB. We used to dominate the scene. Now they changed it over to these so-called Latinos. Excuse me. And I must stress again, because I'm tired of these goddamn paying Africans. They try to force us into being a so called African. You got people like Umar Johnson calling us Africans all the goddamn time. And now he's saying that uh, we were here way before uh, the white man. But he says that they came from Africa. But he has no evidence of that before he used to reject that altogether but now he's acquiescing with that like a lot of these people are because they're not for real with what they're talking about because they're coon agents so you wouldn't have to change your story if you're going to change your story you change the whole goddamn story once you get the evidence to the con contrary my voice has been shot this whole fucking week <laughs> shit man I was changing caliber caliber brakes and rotors not calibers but brakes and rotors and did a break flush. I must say I did an excellent job. That's why I like doing the shit myself. Because I, I, I feel that I do the best job. Perfect. Clean. The only thing I did forget. Because I didn't know it until I started. And you know you can't change the shit up. Was um, I forgot to clean the brake calipers. And that's because I ran out of that uh, brake cleaner solution. <laughs> It felt like there was some in the can, and then by the time I started using it, it was gone. So, I bought some after the fact, but not <laughs> during it. So, we'll see how, if I feel, you know, I'm kind of tired. I don't even feel like taking the wheels off anymore to even try to clean the shit. It was just everything else looking new but the calipers now. But they were looking new until I got the shit serviced by, or the wheels rotated. And I'm trying to figure out how come... Your calipers get dirty if they're just rotating your wheels. That's why I like to do the shit myself, man. So I don't have to deal with these people for trying to fuck your shit up. Anyway. MLB. <clears throat> they switched that over to some so-called Latinos. Who are black guys. But see, 
Like I've, I, I said in previous videos, Latinos are boring. They're corny. And the reason why they're corny is because they're busy trying to be white. Which makes them corny. And makes them boring. White people don't need people trying to be white. But see, the white man is clever. What he's done, he's taken all blacks. He's taken all mulattoes. And that includes a lot of Arabs. Uh, peoples in Asia. And of course, Latin America. And he's made them at least not get with us. Because that's the whole goal. Keep everybody else divided. While keeping a, a, a so-called white identity together. Even if the people aren't actually white. But it's clever. That's what they do. But see, that's what the Pan-Africans should be focusing on. Instead of trying to concentrate on black Americans and trying to call us Africans all the time and shit. How come they don't stress this shit with the so-called Latinos, the so-called Arabs? They just outright reject Arabs and call them white. Call Latinos white. They're taking Tariq Nasheed's lead, his coon agent lead. But these people never question, okay, well, why is your sister married to a, a so-called white Latino? Why do you keep calling these people white? But your wife, who is actually half white, not his wife, his lady, because that's what he calls her. He doesn't call her his wife. He says, my lady. And he didn't marry the female because then his true name would be revealed. That's why. That's why he didn't marry her. And that's why he's careful not to call that his wife. Because he doesn't want people going around digging. Because if you, he married her, then you got to look for a marriage uh, license, marriage certificate, which means that his name would be revealed. That's why he doesn't run for politics either, because people are going to check his ass out. And speaking of which, some people know that I tried to get on his shit, but my man kept me hanging for two hours. So I knew I wasn't going to get on. <laughs> <clears throat> So, football became black dominated with, with a few Africans and a sprinkling of Haitians here and there. I still can't understand why these Africans like becoming football players aside from the money. Because, you know, in Africa, they don't like our football, but I guess it's only about the money. NBA, we dominate that, but what did they try to do? And I've been telling people for years, they've been trying to get white play European players. They can only get a handful. They got to go to Europe. They can't really guilt go to the U.S. The white boys in the U.S., they give them more rope because they want some of, the, some of them to do their thing. And they try to restrict us. That's why you saw the draft. You saw all these uh, foreigners. You got to understand when they draft these guys and they better be Hall of Famers. And that Wimby guy, I mean, ain't no guarantee he's going to be in the Hall of Fame. He's just tall and he, he does move pretty well for his height. It's usually guys like that, you know, it's probably because he's thin. If he put on some muscle, it'll probably be, be a worse situation. You see how poor Zingas is with his injuries. So, you know, they say time shows that guys his height. They're going to have some injuries down the road. But, um, you know, that's what they wanted. They wanted a whole bunch of international players. And, of course, the white racists, they want white players. They don't give a fuck because they see the uh, international black guys as black. So... All these guys, they're trying to supplant us and replace us. That's all it is. But we're too good. But see, you got to understand, not, not only does a basketball roster a problem, but it's also a problem when it comes to finances. Because now, money that could have been yours <clears throat> and was uh, taken for granted to be ours, they're now trying to hand it to these uh 
international players who come from countries who have their own leagues. And then they start sending our players over there to play in their leagues. And they can make a decent amount of money over there or wherever they go. But it's not the same as being in the NBA. Which is where these international players want to go. That's why you saw the French guys with the braids in their hair trying to be cool. And according to Negro, like uh, Umar Johnson, they're all Africans. We're all the same people. So that's the delusion of Pan-Africans. They want you to think everybody's the goddamn same. Like that Daniel Kaluha, or whatever his name is. And that Judas and the Black Messiah. They want you to think, oh, well, uh, it's fine for him to play the shit because he looked just like uh, uh, Fred Hampton Jr. Fred Hampton. Next thing you know, they'll, they'll Pan-Africans will be all right with that guy playing uh, Huey P. Newton. It's fucking crazy. So, this is what these guys are doing. They're trying to take us out, but, and, and again, I always tell people, <clears throat> the only reason why we, we are even in the sports and in demand is not because we're black. It's because we're the best at the shit. That's why. Other than that, they would have wanted to keep us out. Keep in mind with basketball and football, baseball. They, I don't even think, well, I think we used to be in hockey in the beginning, of course, because we created it. But they want to keep us out. Even a game like basketball. They didn't want us in. Because they knew. Subconsciously they knew that we were the best. Or we would take over. And they didn't. Want, and it's economics. They didn't want us to make that money. So that's why. They kept us away. Football. People think now. Because you got all. Well not all of these black quarterbacks. But because you got more. Black quarterbacks than you usually have. A lot of people are thinking. That the NFL was never racist, but the tradition was the black quarterback is is what they didn't really uh, allow. And then you see with these white quarterbacks, they give them, they drop boatloads of money. Trevor Lawrence, all that fucking money. The motherfucker is not proven to be shit. Then Cam Newton can't get a job. And the truth be told... Even though Cam Newton, his passing game, has suffered. But he was still more effective than the Trevor Lawrence. And they gave him all that goddamn money. And he's the reason they lost in the fucking playoffs. You know? So, this is what they do. So, what we got to understand... <clears throat> Is that, you know, they never really wanted us in the game in the first place. Tennis, either. You know that. Golf. Racing. They don't want us in none of this shit. And that's what they've been trying to do with the NBA. You got to keep in mind. Because I always watch old NBA clips on YouTube. Be nice if the NBA cleaned those shits up. The original footage instead of, you know. And let these people use the real highest quality footage. But um, <clears throat> you can see, I guess you could say before the 70s, it was mainly a white league. And um, making sure this thing is not on here. So, <clears throat> but you can see it was mainly a white league. And, uh, this female walking by some big titties, huh? <laughs> so, uh, but, um, you can see that was mainly a white league. And, um, as the seventies came in, you know, started becoming more black or even black, white eighties looked like it was 65, 35, nineties, black guys took over two thousands. It was still black. And we always had the best player. I can't recall a time. What the fuck you looking at? I can't. <laughs> I had all that time to stare, man. Motherfucker, why you stare when you start driving away? 
But um, I can't recall a time when the best player in the league was a white man. But of course, they tried to pull that shit this year. That's why I was happy that the Boston Celtics won. And I did predict, uh, uh, I was on Psycho Faith this year, and I predicted sweep five games at best. My exact words. <laughs> I'm good at this. But I don't, I don't dare bet because sports betting is fixed. With that point spread, that's where I can't, I can't get into all that kind of shit. I can just predict winners and losers. I can do that. And I can even give you a time frame, but I can't give you the fucking score. I can't do all that. But, um... That's why I'm glad the Celtics won because now it's uh, black guys. Um, you know, Jason Tatum looked like he got a white son, but his father is definitely black. Mother's half white. She's one of those that they don't really look like it <laughs> from appearance, but you know, I guess that is what it is. Because they damn sure call try to call Doncic the. Uh, best player in the world see he can't be the best player you can call him the best scorer if you want to you can even call him the best offensive player if you want to but he can't be the best player because he lacks defense but see they don't dare call him a shooter because a shooter is usually reserved for those who can't create their own shot And they call that role players, the shooters. Even though they call Steph Curry a shooter, the greatest shooter around. But they didn't call Doncic the greatest shooter. Then you had the Jokic, who was called the best player before he got kicked out of the playoffs. So now they keep going to Lithuania. And they might have something. They picked some new guy, fucking similar names and shit. They might have something, might not. We'll see, but what they're trying to do now is that they keep trying to tell American players, which they really mean black players, that they need to get with the times or step their game up, all that kind of shit. I'm like, man, we're the fucking innovators of shit. We're not the coaches of these, these uh, games. Matter of fact, Speaking of coaches, I don't like the fact they keep firing black coaches and shit. They, they, that's that's another thing they, they keep doing. Always fire black coaches. My man from the, uh, what was it, the Magic? No, 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 Cleveland. I'm like, God damn, he got you into the playoffs and shit, and then you want to just fire the guy. I mean, damn. I admit they've been firing some white guys lately too, but shit. You know, it's always the black coach that builds the team up. Then they get fired. Then the white man comes in and saves the day. So, you know, it's just crazy. But all I can say is this. Gotta go to Rumble. That's where a lot of the shit is gonna be at. The old school shit. It just takes time because Rumble, YouTube, you can upload quite a few at the same time which cuts down on time and you got templates that you know make the shit quicker but rumble you got to do it one by one you got to fill in everything yourself from scratch or I, I mean I copy and paste on some shit and then you got to wait for their rendering of the video to take place before the shit appears. So that means I let's say if it's uploaded, I gotta wait. If it's one of those four hour video uh, uh, videos, I gotta wait probably a half hour before the shit becomes seen on their website. So that takes time. It's crazy. I don't know why they don't fix that. I've seen a few updates to Rumble, but they, they, they got to fix that shit. Because that used to be a problem with YouTube. But YouTube is a pain in the ass. You get a lot of people who are clearly doing things for the money and the money only. 
You know, every now, every time you look, turn around, somebody got a documentary they want it funded, trying to sell you on some shit. Every damn thing. Some people take it up and, and, and take them up on their offer. I mean, shit, I guess, again, I guess black people love being kind and love uh, paying to be kind. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. All I know is that people like me, we all be TV. You know, my man hasn't been making videos in a minute. He said he wasn't getting a lot of support. And my man, you know, he, uh, brother Ron, he brought a good, uh, a good service to the game, but it's a goddamn shame. The ones who get the support are the ones who's hustling you. That's the fucked up part. I mean, it should be very apparent that some people in it strictly for the money. Strictly for the money. Because when they talk about people, you can tell they don't even know what the hell, who who, who they're really talking about. Because sometimes they don't even know some of the shit that was done. And some of the people look sponsored too. I'll tell you. But, um... We got to be weird when it comes to sports because sports and entertainment, if it were not for sports and entertainment, <laughs> you wouldn't have anything. And again, with the sports is only because we are great that they put us on the teams because you see with these Lithuanians, they want to go back to these guys. France, they want to go back to these people. See, they're actively going after them. They come to us because we're great. That's why I hope LeBron James' son can grow a few more inches. I mean, he looks short to us, but 6'3", you know, that, that ain't short in the regular world, but compared to his father, you know, it is what it is. But um, this is what they do to us. They try to take us out of the game because we're too great and bring in anybody else. That's why I always uh, hope that the European players, even the black ones, fail. I mean, if they're Hall of Fame worthy, so be it. Then, you know, let them do their thing. But a player like Giannis, he can't play basketball. I know some of you might say, what? But the truth is, he can't play basketball. That's why he wasn't famous out the gate. He wasn't popular out the gate. Because at his height, which I believe is 6'10", see, as a matter of fact, I think James Harden made this comment too. That the man does not have basketball skills. He just uses, he, he plays his uh, position in an irregular way. Just running and running over people to the basket. It's effective, but that's not real basketball skill. And you see with him, they gave him two MVPs. They gave Jokic three. See, they hand them MVPs. But they don't hand us MVPs. They hand white boys MVPs all the damn time. Even in the NFL, like Aaron Rodgers, Peyton Manning. But when you're the absolute best, like uh, Tom Brady... He only got but so many MVPs. Even Michael Jordan got but so many league MVPs. I think most of his MVPs came from the finals. Hakeem. That's a foreign player, but the man was very nice. But he was very nice from watching us. (laughs) He said Jordan was the man he was watching. And Dr. J was the man Jordan was watching. I ain't gonna lie, I like watching clips from old sports. Even the compilations from the NFL films and all that kind of stuff. But NFL films, they're the only ones that seem to make official shit. And they do a good job. That's how I learned the players from the past. Even with the NFL, Christian McCaffrey getting paid all that goddamn money. But they, they want to uh, bullshit other running backs that's black. On the money. 
my man does his thing, and he was doing his thing during the Super Bowl. But in order to beat Kansas City, he had to have some other people doing their thing. But overall, though, the 49ers, they, you know, they're a strong team. They can't seem, seem to get over uh, Kansas City. And speaking of that, look at that Patrick Mahomes, even though he's basically a declared white man with his wife and kids. Uh, even him, he's now getting shortchanged on the, on the money. And these whack-ass quarterbacks like Trevor Lawrence, even my, one of my teams is, are, is the Jaguars, but Trevor Lawrence, is, my man ain't happening. And for me, I don't need to see five years. Two seasons. That's all I need to see from a quarterback. That tells me if you got it, or if you're about to get it, or if you don't get it. That's all I need. Two seasons. And unfortunately, with Trevor Lawrence, unless there's a miracle, like other teams start sucking, and they get some powerful players and shit. I know they got Campbell on the on the team. I think he was back on there, right? So that might help them out. But see guys like him, his arm is is, is the, the problem with the team. His decision making. Because some quarterbacks can have an arm, they can have some know-how. But then when the show is on, they get stage fright. It happens to the so-called best of them. <laughs> but not the ones who's ready for the Hall of Fame. And you see what they do to Russell Wilson. They keep trying to shit on him every chance they get. Cam Newton, they shit on him. But Pan-Africans, who, you know, a lot of these people are Masons. Again, I got to ask them, what, what is the game? Did they let you in on the game or are you just taking orders? Because I don't see how it's beneficial to us right now. Because we seem to be the constant victims of attack. You got so-called Hispanics constantly attacking. Matter of fact, speaking of Hispanics, a lot of those NBA players, I don't know if you noticed a few of them, like that freaky one wearing those weird, weird old clothes <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the fingernails and shit. I don't know if you noticed, but his mother looked like she was Mexican. And, you know, they like pushing that shit. But see, like I said, the more they keep putting these Mexicans around us, with big butts and titties popping out and all that kind of shit. Some got flat asses and heart-shaped butts too. But a lot of them have some fat asses on them. People going to do some things. You know, when they start trickling in, I, I seen a few with some black kids. So I already knew, you know how black guys are, man. You know, they can't wait. <laughs> so now they're getting benefit out of us by creating these kids now these kids are going to the NBA and now they get the money it's crazy just like that Will Smith that bad boys that's why I didn't even want to watch that shit because I told you about that Mexican handoff they keep putting them next to us to try to make them cool because the white man is promoting them but they're not cool they're corny that's why they keep asking, how come there are no black Americans in the MLB? Or not that many. Why do they keep saying that they need us in the MLB? Because the shit is consistently the third most popular sport. Then the NHL, then the WNBA. And the WNBA only because it just happens to exist. I heard somebody, I don't know if they're trying to be funny, the other day they said out of the three most popular uh, sports, out of the three major sports, the NFL is number one. And who, who who was next to the guy was looking at him like, he didn't say it, but I, I, I'm sure he was thinking what I was thinking, like, oh, they usually say it's four. Now there are only three, huh? So which one get gets dropped? Is it the MLB? Is it hockey? <laughs> but they say they need black Americans in the MLB why do they need us 
See, if they need us that badly, they should have been paying us and, and getting us. Instead, they wanted to go to the Dominican Republic. Now you get niggas like, yeah, that's what I said. Niggas like Alex Rodriguez who can buy into the uh, Minnesota Timberwolves. And you know I always hate when we buy something or try to and they call us the first this, the first black that, second black that. But Alex Rodriguez, they don't even want to say nothing. How can they even mention what the fuck he is? See, if his name was Alex uh, 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 Jackson, <laughs> even looking, even with his blonde hair, they say, that's a black man. So that's the fucked up thing about this country and niggas like Tariq Nasheed, who seconds to white power. You can have mulattoes from other countries and they don't want to call them black. And then you've got Pan-Africanists who want to second that which goes against their Pan-African uh, criteria or agenda. But yet, if somebody has a white parent, half black, half white, they can't be black. I mean, they can't be white. They got to be black. But now, since the agenda is what's going on, you can have a pro athlete who has a Mexican parent and they want to call that motherfucker Mexican because that's what they're promoting right, right now. And if you look on the news, because in my feed, news from Houston, all these other places keep popping up. I keep seeing East Indian, Mexican, uh, uh, and of course, homo uh, uh, news reporters. Even in New York, they changed. I'm like, God damn. Because that's who they're promoting. They're promoting these Mexicans right now. See, the Mexicans, they got to get supported by the white man. We keep getting shit on by the white man. He's fucking pan-africans who get on my fucking nerves all they do is second the white man i want these pan-africans to round up these mulattoes from latin america in the arab world and even india start calling them africans because any other time you people say uh india was a part of the ethiopian empire even though i didn't know who was the head of such an empire but that's what they claim. <laughs> so, if you ask them who, the, who was the head of the empire, I bet you they can't answer the goddamn question. Because <laughs> you can't have an empire without somebody being at the top. <laughs> Any empire in history that you could think of, somebody was at the top. That's why I never accepted that Ethiopian empire. If you want to say there were blacks in control from Africa and Europe all the way to fucking Southeast Asia. I'll go along with that. And a lot of these groups that people think are some other race, they're actually fucking mulattoes. But Pan-Africans, they don't like uh, going there. They just like cherry picking who should be an African, who should be black. And like I said, when, when it comes to a guy like a Renoko Rashidi, I'm still trying to find that episode. I'm going to put that shit up too when I was dealing with him. Uh, digging in the crates. Speaking of that, I got I to gotta talk about that in a minute. But they only go pick and choose half naked uh, people in other countries that's black and say that these people are black. But when they got clothes on and they're black, they don't want to call them black. So that's why I'm saying these Pan-Africans got to be consistent. That's why we call these people out and they change their style. That's why you got some starting to focus on North Africa now. Because people like me have been calling that shit out for years. And they realize, God damn it, we've been bullshitting. Now Wadi Meyer, uh, Maya called him out again. All he responded was with a laugh. Because I said, this motherfucker can go all the way to the fucking Americas and spend months out here dealing with some different types of black people, mimicking whatever Pan-Africans say, who's black, but yet the man is in Africa and won't go to fucking Algeria, Morocco, and all these places. Speaking of that, I sent the video to Taharka Bay. It was about 
Matter of fact, Tyron might know the video I'm talking about and, and Lionel and other people because it's the same video I put up on uh, Facebook <clears throat> because it was on Algeria. So black people, a whole lot of them. Pan-Africans ignore these people. Tarka Bay, I sent it to him because he keeps saying that more does not mean black. So I had to show him some black moors in part of what was ancient Mauritania, which is Algeria. Morocco is not the only place that was Mauritania. That's why you got a country called Morocco, you got a country called Mauritania, and Algeria was a part, and Tunisia was a part of that shit, and all the way down to Senegal. Tariq Nashi got that shit for my research, by the way, because I've been kicking that shit for years. So, I think he uh, blocked me finally, but, you know, it is what it is. I just hate, see, people like Taharka Bay, who's against reparations and trying to fight against it. So, I don't mind if you're not with it. Just don't fight against it. Even though I don't think, it doesn't seem like we're going to get reparations because they keep promoting. Because I see what they do with these rainbow people and these Hispanics and everybody else, really. They seem to be promoting them while they're trying to isolate us. And you got coon agents who they don't, you know, they don't give a fuck because as long as they get paid. They'll keep trying to isolate us. That's what it seems more like because nothing, nothing is happening right now. We'll see what happens when they put Trump back in office. And a lot of people think that these elections are real. You got two elderly individuals, old as fuck. Before they used to, you know, slam Ronald Reagan for being old. And then George Bush. Now you got two old motherfuckers. One who's supposed to be so-called being running for re-election. Surprised he made it to one term. He, I mean, hell, he, he, it could still be over <laughs> before this shit is up. Uh, and then you got another one that's elderly. And these are the choices. Motherfuckers that may not even survive the term. It's crazy. This is what they do. They're breaking this shit down. Again, if we're not getting nothing. See, I'm seeing they're giving Hispanics money, jobs, position. Putting them in movies. Putting them on TV commercials. Getting products after them. Giving them their businesses. Giving them jobs. East Indians are getting a good job in tech and blocking other people out. East Indians are showing that they're not down with us. And these Mexicans, they ain't really down with us either because they just take him with... Matter of fact, that's another thing Target Bay does. He sides with these Mexicans. Are they Moors too? That's what I asked him when I realized he had blocked me. But, you know, it's just crazy. It's unbelievable. What the fuck is going on? And we got to rely on reparations. How come these other people are getting uh, a, a form of reparations and they don't, they, they, act, they got their own countries? It's fucking crazy. But that goes to show what I've always realized that if they want to give somebody something and stop the oppression, they can do it. Just like they're giving all these homos everything. And, and fuck you too if they take this down because I said homos. God damn it, I'm going to say it again. Homos. They're giving all these people every goddamn thing. Everywhere you go, you got a fucking rainbow flag for what? It's not like they're 50% of the population. You can conservatively estimate and be generous with them, actually. And call them 10% of the population. What, what, what the fuck is this uh, year-round celebration of the shit for? I'm going to assume anybody who's uh, supportive of it, they got to be down with it. Just like I was watching this inter interrogation video earlier. I think it's a newer one with this black guy. I think it's in Florida. 19 years old. He looked a lot older than 19, but <laughs> he was 19. 
motherfucker met a fruity black dude, black dude, by the way, he met a, another fruity black dude on, on the internet. And I guess they had some type of relationship. Then the fruity guy, you know, I guess he didn't like the guy not being true to himself, as they say. So, you know, he said, I'm, I'm going to let it be known that you, you know, you're doing what you're doing. And the other guy didn't like that. So he killed him. Which I think is stupid. Because, shit, if you're the one going back and you want some penis and balls and, and, and some doo-doo uh, coating on your penis and getting into men's butts. Apparently, that's something you like. So, I mean, shit, that's what you keep going back to. Why are you embarrassed that people who are not like that are going to find out? If you don't like, want people to think that you like that, then don't do that. It's that simple. But now they, they gave his ass life in prison. So, life in prison at 19 years old. My God. The guy can conceivably live another 80 years. People don't think about shit like that. <laughs> and even if he had developed some health problems, he's more likely to live another 25 years at minimum. So that's why you got to, you know, the simple part <clears throat> should have just left the guy alone or you shouldn't have gone there in the first place or if you're fruity be fruity people in the comments you see some fruity people in the comment section saying I hate these DL men they need to be who they are hey I don't mind gays outing these DL people but you know that, that's a risk that, that could take place too though but I mean these people are going to be like this you know apparently they're ashamed of it but they want to do it for some odd reason. Anyway, let me close out. This is getting very hot, even though finally temperatures have cooled down to around late 70s or around 80. Last week, my God, hot as hell. Hovering around 100. Um, last thing I want to talk about. I was watching, you know, every now and then you get into this rap video shit. You start finding out about rappers and I forgot what I was looking up. What was I looking up? It got me in the Paul C. Oh, it was Large Professor. That's what it was. Because Kenny Parker on his channel had the Large Professor on. So he's talking about Paul C. And what Paul C. taught him on the SP-12. So... That led me into other acts like Steezo, Mikey D and the LA Posse, which Paul C was a part of. Uh, Kevy Kev. Um, Super Lover C. Casanova Rudd, who I just found out was goddamn half uh, Polish. Oh my god damn I, that didn't dawn on me but his real name his full name is Rud Rud Nicky. I say damn I guess the name don't lie. So Michi X got a fellow brother. <laughs> so that was a shocker. That motherfucker looked blacker than me. And he's half Polish. So he said Paul C was Polish. That's why they uh got together. That's crazy though. <clears throat> And a few other groups, Ultra Magnetic. Now, some people, so you know, I had heard about Paul C's murder, and I always said to myself, one thing I knew up front, no matter what, I knew that whoever did it, they obviously knew him, of course, and it must be been people involved in the music game, either a dispute over production production credits money or somebody might have wanted to take uh, 
something. Even Benzino, his almighty RSO made men group. They had gotten produced by Paul C. And they claimed that they were the last ones to see him. Dropped him off to his house. And I was thinking, okay, they sound like they want to be wannabe tough guys from Boston. Come to New York to try to prove something. Maybe they're thinking, oh, if we kill them, our shit might be more valuable. I didn't know Paul C. had produced them. I remember seeing a video or two by them. Couldn't miss them because they had Boston, Boston Brewing shit. And I was like, okay, we get it, man. You guys are from Boston. We get that shit. I mean, you're going too far. <laughs> you act like you uh, play for the goddamn hockey team and shit. So... You got that. Could have been drug deal. Could have been. You know anything. But one thing I knew. Is it had to be somebody close to him. Because he was killed in his sleep. Now that means what? That means that anybody. That you're going to let in the house. And you're going to. Fall asleep to him. Or let you fall, let you stay in the house while you fall asleep. That means that's somebody you trust. That's what that means. And he was producing a lot of people, getting hits off of him. Now he was cool. I like I like more of this shit he did for Super Lover C and Ultra Magnetic, but a lot of his other and Steezo, but a lot of his other shit though, because they keep talking about what he did for Rakim, and Rakim said he got some leftover shit that he won't put out. Because he doesn't want to in honor of Paul C. But that doesn't make any sense, man. You just you put the shit out. That's how you honor the guy. And in case people don't know, Paul C. was a white dude. And unlike other white producers, the only other one I, I can think of that actually made some strong shit was The Alchemist. And, um, <clears throat> and people like putting Rick Rubin up there. But from what I keep hearing, Rick Rubin didn't really make those fucking beats. He just got the credit for them. Like Eric B., and a few other, and Dr. Dre and them, they, where they get the credits. But they ain't actually put this shit together. But, um, Paul C., he brought the sequencing, and Molly Maul was still better. But Paul C., he was pretty good, though. He put together a pretty good resume. He had the qu better quality control than a lot of these guys, though. Because he was doing the mixing. Mixed down for other artists that played instruments. And he played instruments, too, so... That's why he knew a lot more than your average so-called hip hop producer. But most of his beats though were beats that we heard before, but he just put, you know, he arranged them better because Rod Cam talked about the ghetto beat the ghetto. And he said he loved that shit, but I'm like, God damn, people picked the part that jungle brothers straight out the jungle album. Uh, I said, cause you know, that, that beat came out <laughs> with them first. People picked apart this shit. Um, so you know he he, he has strong production, especially for a white dude. Even though I can make the argument, of course, that the music came from us, and, Jay, and Jay, he mainly sampled James Brown. But anyway, I was watching this documentary because they said it was he was on America's Most Wanted. Uh, the segment about him getting killed. I was thinking, I almost vaguely remember seeing, I think America's Most Wanted has been put back on. And that was an important show. That shouldn't have been taken off, period, because it was an important show. Even, I don't, I don't know how the ratings were, but whatever they were, it was that important that it had to remain. They should have America's Most Wanted channel. And not showing old shit, but, you know, current Motherfuckers that need to be caught. So. I'm still trying to find that segment on uh, YouTube or wherever I can find it at. Maybe it might be Tubi because Tubi's apparently coming up with some shit lately. <laughs> Matter of fact, Tubi's coming up with so much shit. They, you know, I've been fat uh, cross checking uh, the videos I downloaded and took some time to get. To see they, they're on Tubi so I could delete them from my hard drive. And I've been finding a few. 
And I've been finding a plethora of Kung Fu uh, flicks that I never heard of in any kind of way. I said, damn. It's like I almost don't have time to, to watch them all. And some 1950s uh, sci-fi flicks that I like. Don't ask me why I like those shits. I, I, I just can't tell you why. But I just like that shit. This shit is just crazy. But, um... Uh, <laughs> So Paul, see, I was watching this documentary. It's on, it's on YouTube. The two versions. One is clearer. It's a guy. I think it's a white dude. You know, white boys love Paul C because he's white. That's why they like white basketball players. That's to blend these two discussions together. That's why they always talk about Paul C, Paul C, Paul C. Because they're like, oh, man, a white guy was doing that? They like anybody white involved in the hip hop because they, you know, it's a white supremacist type of uh, move. Like, oh man, we we can do this. You blacks ain't all that you think you are. But again, I'm not gonna put the man's production down because he, you know, my man did some things. But a lot of his productions, though, is his arrangement. Like Dr. Dre is known for his arrangement and sequencing. Because most people don't know that. They just put shit together and might throw an instrumental hook or some shit like that or a breakdown and that's that. They don't really know about the quality level. But Paul C was down with this Mike, Mike E.D. and the L.A. Posse uh, uh, group. And he had some cuts back in the day. And apparently he was down with LL Cool J. I guess LL was a part of a group. Never really heard LL discuss being in a group before. But Mikey D, you know, he basically dissed LL with that get rough. Because I think in 87, that's when LL was really big. Because I think he went double platinum, triple platinum on that shit. That was back when... It was hard for rappers to go gold and triple platinum and shit. Platinum. Only a select few went gold and platinum. Houdini, Fat Boys, Run DMC, LL. Anybody is missing? Uh, I think that's it. Everybody else went near gold. Only in the 90s and in the 2000s did people really start selling really, really big and getting all that money. But anyway, I was reading, listening to the guys, because I think it's a two and a half hour project or whatever. I was listening to, it's funny, they said they don't have too many uh, audio of him talking. They said there's a lot of videos out there potentially. But I was listening to each people person that was working with him, Ultra Magnetic. Mikey D, somebody called CJ Moore, a guy that he was with in a band around 1980. Uh, a few other people. Large Professor, a lot of these people, they, they were saying that, you know, they acted like the man was a saint. And then I heard T.R. Love from the Ultra Magnetic. He didn't speak like the man was a saint. Then this guy, C.J. Moore, he was like, uh, yeah, we had a little back and forth arguments here and there. And then I heard Mikey D. You know, they always say the people who are going to take you out are going to be the closest to you. It's funny when it's domestic, they always start with the uh, partner, so to speak, first, because that's usually who it is. A lot of times your best friend, but I don't, from what I heard, they weren't even best friends. It's like Mikey D and uh, Johnny Quest were already together. And then since they worked with Paul C, he became a part of the group. And I think he was a part of the group for two years or something like that. But anyway, I'm going to try to make it quick. <clears throat> As I was listening to all of them. Most people don't have anything bad to say about Paul C. They talked about what he brought to the game, what he taught other people how to use the machines. And then when Mikey D spoke, 
damn, I said, this, this shit hit me, like, just like that. I'm like, damn, how come nobody else sees, hears what I'm hearing? Mikey D said, the police came to see me. Now, I ain't trying to say nothing. I'm just putting shit out there. He said, the police came to see me because I went to the record label to get an event. Matter of fact, before I even finish that part. Every time Mikey D was recording with Paul C, they doing it at the 1212 studio that was in Queens. And Paul C always did it like after hours or something like that and said that it's free. Since he worked there, it's free for him. So Mikey D goes to the label. You know, you coming off the streets. You need some money. He went to the label and said he wanted an advance. He said it was supposed to be 16000 which I imagine 16000 divided by three. And then he said the label said, oh, well, you can't get an advance because Paul C. said that you got $16,000 worth of uh, unpaid studio time. And then Mikey D. said the police spoke to him because he made the comment, I'm going to kill him. Then he said two weeks later, Paul C. was dead. He said, I ain't had nothing to do with it. And I said, you know what? There's always got to be a motive. They, the rumors are that people know who did it. But there's always a motive for some crime, of course. And, and a guy gets killed in sleep. That's the way you got to look at the circumstances. I'm like, damn, these people can't solve this shit. I know it might be harder to prove. But, because I'm sure they don't have the murder weapon. But I got to try and track down that America's Most Wanted episode. But they said, see, the motive was always the question. Why would somebody want to kill him? Usually it's about every reason why people get killed. Sex, drugs, money, jealousy. Jealousy usually revolves around sex, drugs, and money. He's in the music business. So it, it could be jealousy. His personal life could be sex. But I doubt it. Uh, money. Everybody else can't think of a motive, but when Mikey D said that the motherfucker was telling us that the studio time was free while we're recording the album and he's a part of the group, signed to the group, signed to the contract. Studio time is free. He, he's, that's what he's telling his group. You don't have to pay for studio time. But then behind their back, he goes to the label and says, we got $16,000 worth of studio time. That right there, that's some sneaky shit right there. And you know, street dudes don't like hearing that kind of shit. You know, you don't do that kind of shit. Number one, you stopping Mikey D from getting money so he can stunt like rappers got a stunt. <laughs> you know? Because you know rappers need gold chains and sneakers and shit like that. So they denied him that money. You got songs on the radio. This guy is a part of your group. And he's snake flaking and stinking on the money. He's the reason you can't get the advance. And it's going to go in Paul C's pocket. Because they said it was Paul C. He's not going to the studio. But even, let's say the money was going to the studio uh, owners. Paul C. still bought that shit up to the label. So, that's enough for somebody to take his ass out. Right there. That's, the, that's what I said. That's the motive right there. I said I wouldn't be surprised if we learned that Mikey D did that shit. Because he was in the group. He stopped the man from getting paid while being in the group. So what do you do? You take him out so you stop him from getting paid in the group. Or it's just revenge. And he did it in, while the man was sleeping. They didn't say that somebody broke into his house. And did it.
So once I heard that, I said, that sounds like the motive right there. So even if we never catch the guy, I think we got the motive. Now, I think if Mikey D would have heard that the studio said you got unpaid studio time, I think that would have been different. But when he heard that Paul C is the one who said they got unpaid studio time that takes up all their his advance, now it's like Mikey D can't guarantee that he's going to be getting paid from this, these records he's putting out. But Paul C getting paid the advance and he's getting paid the studio time. And I don't want to put race into it, but he might be saying, damn, these, these, these white people, they keep doing this shit, man. Motherfucker getting, we, a lot of men to be in the group. Now this motherfucker getting paid from the studio, probably from the production and from being in the group. And I'm not getting paid. I'm the motherfucking voice. Man, that might do it. That might do it. Not the accused, but I'm just saying that shit hit me immediately. As soon as he said that shit, I said, there you go. There you go. But to close out on Paul C, a lot of people said, oh, man, he would have came up with some fire that people wouldn't have known about. But the truth is, I think we did kind of sneak preview and see what he was coming out with. And the truth be told, like I said, you look up most of everything he produced, most of his shit wasn't really all that hot. It still had good arrangement and all that shit. And people talked about what he did to improve the sound quality. You know, maybe back then, what he did was great. But obviously now, even 20 years ago, <laughs> you could far surpass all that kind of shit on the computer. Even though I'm sure they were using computers then, but mainly they were using actual machines, but... You know, it's the type of shit. So I was watching that shit and I just said, as far as I'm concerned, that's a mystery in, in the hip hop world that's been resolved. That's been solved to me. As far as I'm concerned. Because <laughs> you know how street dudes think. If a well-to-do white guy is in your group, he prevent, prevents you from getting paid. And that money's going to go in his pocket. You know, street dudes are like, man. Now, he could have spoken to the guy about it. Or maybe he didn't. Maybe he casually mentioned some shit. Just to see what the man would say. And then, if he didn't say anything about it or play stupid, he's like, yeah, this motherfucker right here. Because he would think, why would the label have any reason to lie about it? Right? And the reason why, they wouldn't. But once, once he heard it, two weeks later, the man is dead. Say what you will. But I think that's what happened. 